Hello, what's up, guys? This is Sheldon. Welcome back to iOS tutorials by Sheldon. So today's topic is actually third-party frameworks or third-party APIs. As you guys know, it's already the tenth year of iOS. There are so many good company or good individual developers. They're they have already built so many good frameworks in the iOS area. If you go through GitHub, you may find tons of frameworks that you can use for your own project. And they are all open source. It's been 10 years, right? There's so many good frameworks out there to be ready to be used. So as a developer, it's just a good idea for yourself to use it in your own project or even if you're working for a company, it's a good idea to propose some third-party framework to your manager if they're really good. So nowadays in iOS, there are like two or three ways to integrate third-party APIs. For example, we can use CocoaPods, also we can use Carthage, and sometimes we can use uh, Swift Package Manager, uh, which is the uh, newest member of this big family to use third-party frameworks. But today, I'm gonna talk about some basic knowledge as well as some difference or comparisons between Carthage and CocoaPods, so you guys can choose whichever uh, tool you can use to integrate those third-party frameworks into your project. Uh, because they are really different. Um, but before I talk in detail, you can actually see my screen, right? Uh, I have a search like the official GitHub page for Alamo Fire, Reactive, or RX Swift, as well as uh, this Ninja indicator. It doesn't matter if you, you are not familiar with these three frameworks, I just randomly third some frameworks. All of the three. If you scroll to the installation portion, it always says you can use CocoaPods to install, you can use Carthage to install. Uh, Sometimes you can see this Swift package manager. As well as the second guy, Reactive uh, or RX Swift, you can also use uh, yeah, the installation. You can use Carthage, you can use Swift package manager, you can also use CocoaPods. And same for the third one, which is just, uh, I think this framework deserves more attention because it has so many ways actually to load or show you the loading indicator, but it did support CocoaPods and Carthage. So why nowadays people are trying to make their framework uh, available for CocoaPods or Carthage? So the reason is, as a developer, you work for your own company, you work for your own project, you are updating your project all the time. Same thing will happen to these frameworks. When you first time integrate this Alamo Fire into your personal project, if you definitely you can do drag and drop, you download, you just, uh, um, how to say, you can clone, clone or download, you can directly download the zip file and then drag and drop into your personal project. It will definitely work, but it won't help uh, or it's kind of hard to upgrade your framework. Let's say you're using Alamo Fire 1.0 and then suddenly Alamo Fire 2.0 came out and then you have to drag and drop again. So it's it's just not smart to manage your dependencies of your project in this way. So people are thinking ways to use some tools to easily download as well as update your existing frameworks. I think CocoaPods came out first. There are indeed some differences between CocoaPods and Carthage. The CocoaPods uses Jam and is written in Ruby, and for the Carthage, it's even more amazing. Carthage itself is written in Swift. So I think this is pretty cool, but there are some limitations for the Carthage. Internally, it's using um, command line tools, using XC, I we can search like Xcode build. Internally, it uses Xcode build. Both of these guys are cool, but there are some differences. The first one for the CocoaPod, you first need to use PodInate to create a pod file, and then you just copy paste this line in a PodInate file and then pod install. All right, it looks simple, but actually, if you have a project, it will create a workspace for you. Although using this manager is easy to download and configure, actually creating more extra files for your project. So if you have a project in the beginning, it will become a whole workspace. And the workspace will include your, the project you initially have as well as third-party dependencies you install. Uh, it's cool, it's fine, it's just create extra stuff. But the Carthage, when you use Carthage, you also use uh, you need to use brew right brew is just like uh, 
works similar as the jam here. We use jam to install CocoaPod, we use brew to install Carthage. So when you use Carthage, you create a Carthage file as well, and then you just copy paste this line into the file. Until this point, Carthage and CocoaPods, they're pretty similar. But later, uh, when you finish the running of the whole thing, it's the Carthage will only download the whole frameworks into some certain folder, and then you still need to drag and drop into your project. So what made Carthage better? Personally, I think Carthage is better because although Carthage didn't create a convenient workspace for you, but it keeps or it remains your project to be simple in the perspective of number of the files. So you just need to drag and drop this Carthage framework to your project and it's just a one-time work. The next time anything updated, it will just update. It won't take you extra time to drag and drop again. Apart from this, I also want to give you guys some advices of selecting your third-party frameworks. I think when you select your third-party frameworks, unless you're selecting a good product like RX Swift, or which is like make your Swift to be reactive. I mean, reactive programming is so hot now and everybody is trying to make their project to be reactive. So regardless whatever this framework is, this framework have like 10,000 stars. When you choose a third-party framework, you should be very skeptical or picky to choose or to think why we're using this. Because if you search loading indicator, you can find a bunch of them. But the reason I recommend this one is you can see some issues or some people are submitting pull requests. You'd better make sure these frameworks are very active or this community is active. Let's say, for example, now you're working on iOS 10 and the latest Xcode for now uh, till today is Xcode 8. And Xcode 8 supports iOS 10 and Xcode 8 uh, uses Swift 3.1 until 3.2. In the next day, you upgrade your project into supporting iOS 11, which requires Swift 4. If this framework itself, it doesn't support Swift 4, it, it will be a pain in the ass. You will be having a hard time to, to make this framework even work. Right. So you have to be very picky when you select your third-party framework. You have to make sure the whole community or this framework is built by some very active developer or individual or is related to some big company that is really putting efforts into make this framework to be good. So in this case, you can convince yourself, oh, I should use this. And if in the future I upgrade my app, these frameworks will be available at that time. This is the first advice I gave you guys. The second advice is, if this framework is written in Objective-C, apparently you don't need to worry about this. Actually, iOS is just Objective-C. Uh, Swift is actually a wrapper. Also, Objective-C is just a wrapper for C internally. I mean, for iOS internally, we're using C as well as uh, Smalltalk. If you choose the Objective-C framework, you really don't need to worry about the migration. Uh, when this Swift 3 becomes Swift 4, when Swift 4 becomes Swift 5, in the future maybe it becomes Swift X or something. Uh, using Objective-C, you don't need to worry about this, but just keep in mind, Apple is really pushing Swift. So it's not gonna be soon, but someday I think Apple will just stop supporting new API to Objective-C. Just my personal opinion, but Apple is really pushing Swift. And as you guys know, Swift is an open source community. If you go to Swift community, you can see there are so many proposals from very good different developers. People are trying to make Swift better and better. But Objective-C is closed source or not open source. So it just stays there forever. Um, people are trying to make it better, but you cannot make it better so fast. Uh, when it's not open source. And that's why Android becomes so popular and <laughs> this whole Android platform itself is open source. My point is, if you choose a framework that uses Objective-C, you gotta be careful. Not within maybe 10 years, but in the future, I think Apple will try to deprecate everything or stop supporting new API at least into Objective-C. With that being said, I think I can wrap up this video. I hope you have some basic idea of using CocoaPods as well as Carthage to install third-party APIs into your good and uh, smart project. If you find this video helpful, please thumb up and stay tuned and subscribe for new videos. And also, every time I write the code, I always 
upload to my GitHub repository. You can also follow me in the GitHub repository. And also I have a Facebook group so you guys can join the group and post anything there and then you guys can communicate with each other. And also I will answer the questions from you guys uh, directly in the um, Facebook group. All right, I will see you guys in next video. Bye. Peace.